and welcome back to another video on my channel. Just quickly before we get into this video, um, I just want to say that with everything going on, I think I'm going to kind of abandon for the time being Mystery Mondays and Freaky Fridays and I'm just going to upload videos as I research them and I don't think that I'm going to particularly pick mysteries for Mondays and other freaky videos for Friday just for the time being. If that's okay with you guys, let me know what you think about that in the comments because of course, if you guys want some normalcy, if you guys want Mondays to be mysteries and Fridays to be other things, then definitely let me know and I will accommodate you with that because obviously I'm making these videos for myself but I also make them for you guys. So make sure to let me know what you think about that in the comments. I just wanted to say that at the beginning of the video just so that everybody hears it so that you can give me your opinion. But anyways, with that all being said, let's get right into today's video. Rodney Marks was born on March 13th, 1968 to parents Ray and Paul Marks. He grew up in Victoria, Australia along with his two sisters and he had a very normal and happy childhood. After high school, Rodney went on to receive an education from the University of Melbourne, Australia and after that he went on to receive his PhD from the University of New South Wales, making him a legitimate astrophysicist. Now obviously, as you can probably already tell with that little bit of information, Rodney was a very smart guy. He had a PhD, he went to university, but according to his friends, his family, teachers, and people who worked with him, there was more to his intelligence than just being smart. And many people described him as being just absolutely brilliant. He was just a really, 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 really intelligent guy. Um, more than your average person who is smart, he was even higher up than that. All throughout university and things like that while receiving his education, Rodney showed a very large interest in the South Pole. And even after he received his PhD, he still was extremely interested in the South Pole and decided that he wanted to study the South Pole with more of a hands-on approach. So after he was done, he got his PhD, he graduated university, he decided that he was going to take a job at the South Pole and move there from his home in Australia. So between the years of 1997 to 1998, Rodney would spend his time at the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station, which for those of us who may not know, which was me before going into this case, is the most southern location in the entire world. He would be working there a part of, as a part of the Chicago Center for Astrological Research in Antarctica and was also involved in some other, I guess, like companies that worked at the South Pole and one of these was an explorer project called Spyrax. But being there absolutely infatuated Rodney and as you have probably guessed, he was super, super invested in his work which is very clear to us because he spent a year up at the South Pole, which as you can probably imagine is not the best place to be. Um, the temperatures there range in the winter from negative 30 to negative 80, which are temperatures that most of us can't even imagine. It is very dark up there during the winter, they don't really get much sunlight, and there isn't too many people to talk to besides the other people that were working at the station with him, so it's almost like being in complete isolation, which is what a lot of us are going through right now. In the winter months when Rodney was up there, the only people that were really at the station were what was referred to as the skeleton crew, and they were only really there to kind of make sure that things run correctly and that nothing goes wrong and there was just a very select few of them and Rodney Marks again was a part of this crew so he stayed up there for the entire winter this year. So like I already briefly mentioned staying up at the South Pole during the winter months is just like crazy I can't even imagine what it would be like um, the weather is so bad and so bitterly cold up there that it is impossible to get any kind of transportation up there at that time. People can't drive up there, you can't fly up there, there is no coming and going. Once you're there, you're there to stay. And so because of this, they got delivered a large amount of supplies beforehand to prepare them for the time that they would be up there and not be able to leave. But pretty much as things go is if they had forgotten to get anything or something wasn't dropped off to them, then they would just have to go without it for the winter months because it was that isolated and people couldn't come and go because the weather up there is that bad during these months. And 
Normally, this would be really, really hard on anybody. I personally don't think that I could do this. I'm sure a lot of you guys are with me on that. This would just be absolutely terrible, but Rodney absolutely loved it. So much so that after he was finished his first year up there, he signed up for it again to do the exact same thing from November of 1999 to the November of the 2000s. And during this time, he would start working for a separate part of the company called the Smithsonian Center, I believe. And this allowed him to work with a lot of cool, I guess, like tools. And the one in particular thing that Rodney was super, super excited about, most excited about for working for the Smithsonian Center now, was that he got to use a very large telescope. Now, before I get into the next part of this case, I just want to start off by saying that Rodney Marx was at a very, very happy point in his life at this time. Although his job may not seem conventional to many of us, it was what he loved and that was where his passion lied and he really, really enjoyed doing it and he was happy doing it. On top of that, in that same year, Rodney had recently gotten engaged. Now, you might think that this might put a wrench in things because he lives in the South Pole for however many months out of the year, but his fiance named Sonia Walters actually lived on the base with him because she was a maintenance specialist. So they were living together and they were both doing what they loved and Rodney was just really happy. So this all starts on March 11th, 2000 when Rodney was walking from his workstation back to the living quarters on the station. He was going to meet Sonia for dinner and while walking over, he started to notice that he wasn't feeling too great. So when he met up with Sonia, he told her, you know, I'm not feeling well. And then he proceeded to say that on top of that, his eyes were starting to really irritate him as well. The horrible feeling that Rodney was experiencing proceeded to get worse and worse over the next few hours or so, until the point that Rodney decided that he was just going to go to bed and that he was going to try and sleep off whatever this feeling was. And he thought that when he woke up the next morning, he would be completely fine and all of this would be over. But unfortunately, that is not how the night went. Rodney tossed and turned the entire night, waking up several times before completely waking up for the day at 5.30 a.m. This is when he noticed that he was coughing a lot and he was having a really hard time breathing. And at this point, he started to vomit blood. Now, that would be alarming for anybody and this really freaked Rodney out, so much to the point that he checked himself into the medical facility that was located at the station. Something else I forgot to mention here is that Rodney really enjoyed drinking and partying. It wasn't like he was an alcoholic, but he definitely did enjoy a drink or two on the regular basis. So when he got to the doctor's office on the station, the doctor allegedly just kind of brushed his illness and his symptoms aside, saying that he was having alcohol withdrawals. And he said that Rodney appeared anxious and nervous, but it was nothing that would seem out of the ordinary for a stress-induced illness. So he gave Rodney a antipsychotic drug to kind of calm him down, and he told him to go back to his quarters and sleep it off. After Rodney returned back to his room over this next several hours, his condition would only grow worse. He was becoming weaker, he was still being nauseous, he was throwing up blood, he kept coughing, he had an extremely low blood pressure, sorry. He um, was complaining that his entire body was aching all over, but he said that the most painful thing was his eyes. They were hurting him so bad and eventually he lost his eyesight altogether. Because his condition was getting so severe, Rodney returned back to the doctor's office for a second time, but the doctor couldn't determine what was happening to Rodney and he was so concerned about this that he had even tried to reach out to other medical professionals over satellite, but to no avail, nobody answered him and the doctor had no idea what was happening at this time. On the afternoon of March 12th, Rodney's symptoms would reach an all-time high and the doctor, not knowing what else to do, decided to re-inject Rodney with another antipsychotic drug to see if it would calm his symptoms. Now, this did seem to work, but only for a very short period of time. Shortly after this, in the room, it was just Rodney, the doctor, and Sonia, 
And it was very obvious at this point that Rodney was trying to sit up and he couldn't because his body was so weak. And shortly after that, he just stopped breathing altogether. The station's trauma team was called in and they performed CPR on Rodney for a total of 45 minutes, but to no avail. On March 12, 2000, 32-year-old Rodney Marks would pass away due to what was at the time found to be a heart failure. All of the doctors and the medical professionals and the scientists who were at the station at the time did all that they could with the equipment that they had, but unfortunately it didn't work for them and Rodney did end up passing away. And nobody who was working at the station and like there was a lot of intelligent people there and nobody could come up with a solid explanation for why Rodney had passed away. A statement was made by the National Science Foundation saying that Rodney Marks had passed away due to natural causes. However, this could not be confirmed because again, Rodney had passed away in the middle of the Antarctica winter, which means that nobody could leave or go to the station, so nobody could examine Rodney's body. So the cause of death at this point was kind of up in the air when the foundation made that statement. Now again, up at the station at this time was a group of very intelligent, smart people. And so with them all thinking, they decided that they were going to put Rodney outside to preserve his body. But because he was a friend to most of the people, who lived on the station with him, as well as he had his fiance living there, they decided to build him a makeshift coffin so that he wasn't just out in the cold. And they left the top open so that he could look up at the stars. And I just think that that's a little bit of a heartwarming part of this case. But anyways, when the weather was permitting and it started to warm up and they were able to fly Rodney's body, they flew it out to a place where he could get an autopsy and that is where everybody was absolutely shocked to find that Rodney Marks did not pass away due to natural causes. He had actually passed away from methanol poisoning and he had ingested at least one cup's worth of this toxic substance. Suicide in this case was ruled out pretty quickly because again, Rodney was at a very happy point in his life. He had just gotten engaged to the love of his life, he was working his dream job and he was just overall very happy. But another thing to consider is that Rodney had recently gone to the doctor for a completely unrelated health issue and usually people who are considering taking their own lives don't really have much, I guess, care for their health and Rodney clearly did. On top of that, Rodney again was a very, very smart man, so he would have known that death caused by methanol poisoning is extremely painful. So if he was to take his own life, he likely would have chosen another method. And if there was foul play involved in this case, that would make Rodney Marks the first person to have ever been murdered at the South Pole, although that has not been confirmed. This case was very difficult because the like the top of Antarctica where the South Pole is, is broken up into a bunch of different jurisdictions. Now, Rodney was up there working for America, so technically speaking, at the time of his death, he was in America's jurisdiction. The NFS was not cooperative in this investigation at all. They didn't help investigators, they didn't give investigators anything to go on, and they left the Marks family with zero information and zero answers. On top of that, as you have probably already realized, by the time investigators could actually get to the station, it was no longer winter, and all of the other 49 people who had been up at the station with Rodney when he passed away had now all gone back to their homes in different countries all over the world. Now, investigators took it upon themselves to try and contact all 49 people and request for information from them, but they had only gotten back 11 responses. So out of 49 people who were there when he passed away, only 11 answered when they were contacted by people investigating Rodney's death. So as you can probably imagine, it was very, very difficult for investigators to get any answers in this case. There wasn't anybody coming forward saying that anybody had a problem with Rodney. It was unknown why somebody would want him dead. 
but it was also completely unknown how somebody could have ingested that much methanol without realizing or something else like it was just really confusing how he had that much methanol in his system all around like unless somebody was forcing him to drink it it just didn't make sense to the investigator according to all of rodney's friends and the people who he worked with on the base nobody could come up with a reason why somebody would want him dead nobody could come up with a reason why he would have an enemy they said that rodney had a very dry sense of humor which sometimes offended some people but rodney would always go above and beyond to make sure that if he did offend somebody that they knew he was sorry and he would keep his humor to a minimum if it was clearly bothering somebody and it didn't really appear that anybody who was at the station at that time had any issues with Rodney's sense of humor. So nobody could come up with a reason why somebody would want him dead. Um, again, there was only 50 people at the base, including Rodney at that time. And because there was such a small amount of people, they were all very close. So if somebody did have it out for Rodney, you'd think that it would be a little bit obvious. And again, because of the small amount of people on the station and the fact that they were all there working, Almost all of the people on the station could be accounted for on an hourly basis. To make things even stranger though and to add to that, um, all of the 50 people who would be staying at the station during the winter months had to take a psych evaluation just to make sure that they were sane and they all obviously passed. And besides a few little disagreements, I mean you're living in a very small place, very close to a lot of people, there will be disagreements. Nobody could come up with a solid reason as to anybody who honestly didn't like Rodney. So it just left everybody with zero answers. Many people in this case, again, believe that the most likely theory is that Rodney Marks did this to himself. But authorities do not believe that this theory is credible and it is not one that they really look into too much because they don't think that this is suicide and it was again ruled out quite quickly. Others believe that Rodney could have completely drank the methanol by accident thinking that it was alcohol. Again, Rodney really enjoyed having an alcoholic drink after work when he got back to his living quarters and they thought that maybe he would have accidentally poured a drink of methanol instead of alcohol. However, the methanol that was at the station, all of the methanol that was at the station, was very, very clearly labeled. You couldn't miss the label on the bottle. And on top of that, you would just think that living on a base like that, that has so many chemicals and whatnot on it, you would be a little bit more conscious when doing something as simple as pouring a drink because you'd know how many toxic liquids there are around. Another theory in this case, which I think personally is the one that I believe, is that Rodney bought some kind of liquor while he was abroad somewhere, some kind of exotic kind of liquor, like you know how everywhere has their own alcohol. Um, I know Peru's is Pisco and yeah, I don't know, just exotic alcohol. And he liked to drink, so he would pick up bottles of exotic alcohol on his travels. And maybe he bought a bottle of some kind of liquor while he was traveling from a bootlegger and it had a higher methanol content than normal. This is actually something that is quite common in the black market of alcohol. And it is a very high possibility that this is what happened. Some people also believe that maybe Rodney had drinking the methanol in some kind of prank gone wrong. Although I don't know how replacing somebody's drink with methanol could be funny at all. Um, obviously if you're doing that, you have a very twisted and sick sense of humor because that is just not funny. And the last theory in this case, which is the theory that is believed by investigators, is that for whatever reason, somebody who was living on that base with Rodney had it out for him and wanted him dead and that he was murdered. However, again, there are zero suspects and there is zero motive to go off of with this theory. My heart sincerely goes out to the loved ones of Rodney Marks. I can't even imagine what it is like to lose somebody who seems like they're just starting their life and whether it was an accident or it was on purpose it is just so tragic and especially because he died in such a painful manner i just can't even imagine
But guys, that brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.